I'm back at the stick marsh and I'm getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. They're everywhere, oh my gosh. Um, but I'm back here because yesterday I was scouting this area out and I found a whole bunch of snail kites have moved into the area and they're doing a lot of fishing. So maybe I can get some pictures of them. And as you can see, it's not even, the sun's not even up yet. But the sun is finally up. And there are birds all over the place. There's a lot of vultures. And there's a hawk, I think, two of them right in front of me. But I just saw my first snail kite. He was flying way over this way. Well, you can probably see better over my shoulder. Back over that way on this canal. But I'm gonna see what these two birds are here real quick before I go check out the snail kite. Have I mentioned that I really like photographing birds of prey? There is something about them. They just look so cool to me. The expressions on their faces, those magnificent eyes, those brilliant feathers, and those dragon-like talons, they are beauties, and this red-shouldered hawk is no different. It was watching something from a few feet below, and it literally just hopped right off of this guardrail. As it did, it moved out of the plane of focus, and the image is a little soft. Had I chosen an aperture of, say, 7.1 or f8, the bird would have been sharper, I think. But I'll take it. And then the final flyaway shot with a perfect focus on that eye. What a brilliant animal. Check out all these vultures. There's a big one right here on this gate. I'm going to come through this way real quick. Just to see what else is over here. There's one over there with the sunrise. Look at this guy right here. up Mr. Vulture and there's about let's see one two three so eight nine of them on this thing over here another gate a lot of grackles all kinds of cool little things there's a bunch of them right here on this fence the gate I mean And they're all down here in this grass. God, that's creepy sounding. Guess this is their hangout. Look at them all. Ooh, that one grunted. They must have something they're eating over here. Let me see them over my shoulder, maybe. I'm grunting. <laughs> See him? And then they're grunting. There's some dead fish over here that they're eating. Oh. <laughs> this camera's pretty wide angle too, so they're actually pretty close to me. All kinds of birds. I don't see the snail kites though. They were further this way. So I'm gonna walk down there, see what I can find. Although there's a bunch of birds out here too. It's really hard to choose. Apparently, there was some sort of bird party going on in the middle of this dirt road, and only grackles and egrets were invited. It was pretty interesting. And then off in the tall grass, I spied this pair of juvenile limpkins. Can you see them hiding in the grass just a little bit to the right? And then, when I turned around to head back, this osprey flew in real close and showed off that really impressive feather display. Yep, the wildlife here is pretty incredible. On the other side of this grass, there's all kinds of stuff. Look right here, something crawled up and laid right there. Ooh, but that was a big old alligator. There's huge alligators here. But right out there is a limpkin, a tricolored heron, a moorhen, all those vultures, and then a great blue heron. Just in this little tiny area. How cool is that? All right, this place is loaded with giant alligators. I'm gonna show you this really sketchy trail I just went on. 
It's kind of frightening. So right where I am, there's a little teeny area just wide enough to drive a car through. I'm gonna switch to the front mode of the camera. All right, on either side is this big canal. One there, and then there's one over here. And then there's this little teeny trail that goes right down the middle to these dense palm trees. And this is really sketchy because of all the big gators around here. It's like an ambush spot. So I'm kind of trucking through here really quick. Also testing out how good this gimbal is. But look when you get over here, it gets even weirder. I see like there's a limpkin over here on the other side of these palm trees. But check this out, look. Right there. See him? Oh, there goes another lumpkin. Look what it opens up to, though. Look at this. Giant lake full of alligators. Nice reflections on the water, too. Look at that, as far as you can see, though. Pretty cool and this little trail goes back through here a little bit oh god i thought that was a big gator right there that stump it goes back through here the limpkin's over here on my right i hear him Ooh, look at that want to walk in that i don't oh. and then keeps going this way where the limpkins were are but now on either side look you got this canal nice bank right here for the gators to come up where's a great blue heron over there and on the other side you got this giant lake Pretty cool. Really like the reflections on the water. I got this heavy duty camera strap too, check it out. I'll be doing a review on that in a little bit. That's the super sketchy trail and it goes in for miles in either direction. All right, there's a bunch of snail kites. But they're far over here in this back pond. Way too far for me to be able to get any good shots of them. And the sun is already getting kind of harsh. But maybe they'll show up over on this side closer and I can get some cool shots. I finally get my first shot at a snail kite. And because the sun is directly behind the bird, I get this cool silhouette. Look at those highly specialized talons. They are perfect for plucking large snails from the water. But the silhouette is hiding something. Is this snail kite a male or a female? The bird flies over my head and now the light is right behind me. It turns and comes back towards me and I can clearly see this is a beautiful girl. She spots a snail, banks, and gives me the perfect photo op to get all those beautiful feathers. I can even see the ID on her band. This is snail kite 48C. These birds are banded and tracked because they are highly endangered. In the early 1960s, there were only 40 of them left. They have rebounded, and now there are over 400 breeding pairs. She gives me one more beautiful close-up. Look at those brilliant red eyes and the sun creating those two white catch lights. What an incredibly beautiful bird. The female wasn't the only snail kite in the area. Her mate was there too. He looks much different with his light gray color, and I was in the perfect position to watch and photograph him doing his thing, pulling a large snail from the canal. This is a very amazing process to watch because these birds practically hover while they reach deep into the water and grab a snail with those long talons. Think about how vulnerable they are as they're doing this. This one dropped down into the canal right by a large alligator who was busy patrolling the area. The snail kite was too busy reaching for the snail to notice, and thankfully the alligator didn't seem to have any interest in this bird. Success! That is one big snail. I asked the snail kite to turn its head so I could get a better shot of those magnificent red eyes, 
And it did. Look at those piercing red eyes. Wow. I wonder if the red color somehow helps them see through the water so they can easily see those snails. If you know why they have red eyes other than because they look really cool, go ahead and leave a comment. From the looks of this snail, this is not a native apple snail. I would guess this to be an invasive species from South America. I talked to a researcher a few months ago who stated that this might be a rare case where an introduced species is actually helping because these big meaty snails provide more food for the animals that depend on them, like the snail kites and limpkins in this area. One more round with a different male snail kite, and this time there were no clouds to block out all the good light. This one grabbed a much smaller snail and gave me the opportunity to capture this picturesque shot with all the color from the sky and that tall grass that lined the shore of the canal. These are some awesome birds. Somebody just told me that there were a bunch of really big bucks down this way with a lot of uh, antlers. So I'm gonna go see if I can find them, maybe get some cool shots. On my way to the deer, I spotted this Cooper's hawk perched in the top of a pine tree. At least I think this is a Cooper's hawk. I could be wrong on that. Have you ever seen a bird make a mistake? This one did. It jumped into the air so that it could fly away. Then it changed its mind and tried to grab this branch, but missed, and it just tumbled through the air. This lasted a couple of seconds, and then it righted itself and flew away. Go home, bird. You're drunk. And then I came across this vicious pack of wild turkeys. They were sizing me up, so I made a hasty retreat before they tried to attack. Of course, I'm just kidding. They're just turkeys. I found the deer, but the bucks were nowhere to be found. I would bet they were hiding somewhere nearby, because they're never too far behind beautiful does like these. I was able to get pretty close to this one, and then she took two steps toward me and stomped her front hooves in the ground. I believe she was telling me that I was close enough. She was on top of a hill, and I would bet there were younger, smaller deer behind her on the other side. Thanks for going on this trip with me. I had a great time. Click the thumbs up. Feel free to share the video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe. As usual, feel free to leave comments. I love hearing what everyone thinks of the adventure, and I'm eager to take you on more.